Hello everyone, this is day one of Watches and Wonders Geneva. Time is ticking, so let's dive straight into the program. Welcome to the morning show of Watchers and Wonders. I'm Olivia Chang and every day I'll be giving you a sneak peek into the world of watchmaking. For the next 30 minutes, we find out what's on the minds of CEOs in 2022 and we get a hands-on look at new watch collections. On top of that, we'll also take you around the Pal Expo here in Geneva so you can experience all the action no matter where you're joining us from around the world. Lots in store for the big opening day today, so grab yourselves a cup of coffee or tea Make yourselves at home and most importantly, enjoy the show. Now, who better to start the day than Emmanuel Perrin, president of the Fondation de la Haute Hologerie? Earlier, I asked him why the 2022 Watches and Wonders event is such a milestone. I think this edition of Watches and Wonders in Geneva will, will be important at several levels. First, we're back. It's the first time for the past three years that we, we have a physical, uh, physical salon in Geneva. Second, it's the biggest salon, fine watchmaking salon we have ever organized uh, in Geneva. Um, 19 brands, uh, newcomers, uh, 11 from uh, the major maison, uh, eight from the fine watchmaking independent watchmakers, um, for a total of 38 maisons that will uh, exhibit at Watches and Wonders. Uh, coming in here, I saw the crowd outside, so there is a trepidation, there is impatience, there is this, this will to get back together again and, and to showcase and, and show the world the best of fine watchmaking. As you mentioned, this year we'll also see both historic brands and newcomers all under one roof. Can you tell us a little bit more about what we can expect there? So you, you can expect all 24 of the historic brands, including the eight newcomers. Uh, you can expect 14 uh, independent fine watchmakers, 11 of which are, are new, so a, a lot of, of novelty for, from that uh, aspect. And you, you can expect a, uh, a live program that is much, much richer, that is the richest it's ever been. How do you expect the development of Watches and Wonders on the global stage in the future? What could this look like? I think what, what is key for Watches and Wonders to, to exist and to thrive beyond Geneva first is, is to have a very successful uh, uh, event in Geneva. This is the mothership of, of Watches and Wonders. This is the cradle of, of Watches and Wonders. Uh, and, and this is the main event, if you will. If that's strong, uh, if that event is strong, then the ecosystem uh, will thrive. We've, we've had already uh, four Watches and Wonder exhibition in, in China, in Shanghai and in Hainan in the past uh, two years. Uh, we were present in Hong Kong. We were present in uh, the USA for, se for several times. We're looking at the Middle East, going back to the, to, the, to the US. So there's a lot of discussion with the exhibitors committee to see uh, how we, we, we can take Watches and Wonders out of Geneva to the world and as well maybe reach a wider audience of the public. Sounds like there's a lot planned. We'll have to keep our eyes out for that. So thank you very much, Mr. Pahal. Thank you very much. And for all our visitors, welcome and enjoy Watches and Wonders 2022. Now, for those of you who are tuning in, you might notice that Watches and Wonders might look a little bit different from the years before. I spoke with Mathieu Humor, CEO of the Fondation, on what we can expect from the new hybrid program. Yes, absolutely. So after two years of uh, entirely digital events, it was key to return to the face-to-face -face format. Watches and Wonders Geneva 2022 is hybrid, with a physical event for those attending in Geneva and a digital solution via the, the watchesandwonders.com platform. Watches and Wonders Geneva 2022 is a much more than an event. It is the largest watchmaking summit ever organized in Geneva with a lot of content to be discovered here in Geneva Pal Expo or online on the digital platform. So what can participants expect in terms of experience and interaction? A lot of uh, experience and interaction. Very happy to, to give you the, the first insight. Uh, Watch Under Geneva promises to, to offer a brand new and immersive experience for, for the visitors. 
after this pandemic, uh, it starts with uh, having the products in your hand, talking to people behind the watches. And um, so very, uh, very exciting to, to be back here in Geneva. Watches and Wonders is, uh, is designed uh, as a fashion week where the world industry can meet, see the novelties, sniff out the new trends and meet the movers and, and shakers of today's watchmaking world. Now, the program is both rich and intense. What are the key highlights of this edition in terms of content and programming? One of the highlights is this show, uh, the, the morning show, broadcast live every morning uh, and on the YouTube channel and on our digital platform. A new rendezvous as well, the late show every day, 7 p.m. It will come back on uh, all the highlights of the day, uh, a recap uh, of all the presentation of the day. The 45-minute panel discussion every day as well, 1 p.m., uh, something not to be missed. Uh, ex they will explore the issue of the sustainable uh, development. We have also the lab uh, located in the center of the salon in front of the Carré des Horlogers. It is a real uh, ideas laboratory, approximately 15 uh, projects from, uh, from the Maison with a focus on, on CSR and something very unique uh, to be discovered. The time design exhibition uh, is dedicated to the evolution of the design research. Uh, approximately 100 timepieces uh, will be presented in showcases uh, developed uh, by students of L'Ecole d'Art de, de Lausanne. So we can't wait to see you here in, uh, in Geneva, Palexpo, on the digital platform. See you there. Well, thank you so much for sharing all those first insights, Mr. Hume. Thank you very much, Olivia, and see you there. Stay with us, all the action from inside the Pal Expo in just a moment. Now that Watchers and Wonders 2022 has officially kicked off, it's time to get a sense of the atmosphere. Our reporter, Tanya Koenig, is on site at the Pal Expo and she's going to get all the details for us. Tanya, uh, I see you're inside. There's a hustle and bustle behind you. So tell me, what exactly are you experiencing right now? Hello everyone and welcome to Inside Watches and Wonders. I don't know about you, but I'm super excited on this very first day of the very first large-scale watch fair happening in three years. Now, Watches and Wonders is an invitation-only event, but with me, you'll get exclusive virtual access behind the scenes. Right now, we're here in the entrance area. As you can see, there's a photo booth here where you can take some pictures right when you arrive and post it on social media with the hashtag Watches and Wonders 2022. Now there are 38 brands showcasing their products here so you can expect news and announcements coming out of the watches and jewelry world this week. Now I want to know how excited people are actually. They're all flocking in so I'm just gonna uh, see who is open to actually quickly give me a sound by hi. May I quickly? Okay. Uh, some are shy. Uh, we're actually live on television Excuse me, may I quickly ask? Oh, okay. So everyone is very shy. The first day, uh, I think everyone is excited as well. I nearly made it into the uh, watch fair, but I'll be back to show you more. And with that, back to you, Olivia. Thank you so much, Tanya. I think that everyone has a very busy agenda, is running back to all their meetings for the day. So we'll catch you later. Uh, now, don't go anywhere because in just a moment, we're going to be speaking with the host of Watchmaking CEOs and finding out what really makes them tick. Our first guest, CEO guest of the day, is none other than Karl Friedrich Schäufler, co-president of Schuppard. Welcome, and I hope you're having a great and busy start to the morning already. Well, good morning, and uh, yes, of course, it's uh, a day full of excitement ahead, and um, I'm very excited personally also to uh, live a, a real salon again after 2019. I know you're sitting right like, across uh, from me. Yes. So uh, let's get right into the company. For sure, part, family seems to be at the very core of the Maison. Tell me how essential is this family spirit in the world of watchmaking in general? 
<clears throat> well, it's true. We are one of the, I would say, the, one of the last family-owned and family-run companies mm -hmm. in, the, in the watchmaking sector. And um, in a way, we are a little bit special in that respect. And uh, I feel that uh, as a family company, we probably have an advantage in being able to think more on the long term. We don't necessarily have to answer to uh, shareholders all the time. And uh, we can cons c pursue long-term projects easily. And uh, I would mention, for example, sustainability, but also cr developing craftsmanship in the company and developing a manufacturer, which we did in the last 25 years. Mm -hmm. And I want to touch on that. How has this independence actually impacted the brand's strategy and craftsmanship? Well, when I started <clears throat> in 1996 to uh, develop just one automatic movement back then, I didn't expect, honestly, to reach the level we have today. But uh, it was our road to independence. And uh, I'm extremely happy and proud that we made <clears throat> this decision that I persuaded also my family to uh, enter into this uh, project. Mm. And basically, um, it opened up a whole wealth of knowledge and um, uh, to us and craftsmanship that we didn't uh, master at that time. And I want to ask a personal question. How do you think you're adding your own touch as part of this generation of the family business? Well, basically, and I have to speak for my sister and myself, uh, because we are both uh, we're co-presidents of the company, uh, when, when Caroline joined shortly after, she, uh, she said, for example, we absolutely need to develop boutiques. And that was early days, and there were very few brands even thinking about opening own boutiques. And uh, for my part, I was persuaded that we needed to become more independent and, and produce our own movements. And lately, my son, who is not yet in the business, insisted that we re-edit a sports watch that was called St. Moritz, and mm -hmm. it became the Alpine Eagle. And so I think it's great that every generation uh, puts uh, a brick to the building, and, uh, and I, I hope that we will continue this way for long. Sounds like everyone is adding their own touch in this melting pot. Mm. And we have time for just one last question. How do you see the appetite for Mertier Dach watches developing in the future? Because that's a, a big focus. Well, Mertier Dach mm. is in, cent in the center of our attention. Mm. Uh, we have always uh, put a lot of attention to perpetuating the tradition of craftsmanship. We have uh, about 50 uh, apprentices within our our company mm -hmm. and basically uh, we try to develop these crafts and pass them on to the next generation it is the basis of mm -hmm. our of our business basically and if we don't do it not everybody else will do it okay okay well thank you very much for joining with us today uh, five minutes of your time and I know you have a busy schedule ahead of you thank you thank you very much mr. Tarkula. take care No time to waste. We're heading over to our second CEO of the day. Uh, welcome, Chris Granger here, CEO of IDVC Schaffhausen. I want to take a step back in time. 1985, precisely, was a pivotal year for IWC Schaffhausen. Tell us why it was so monumental. Well, it was 86, but uh, <laughs> never mind. Uh, what really, IWC has always been a, a functional watchmaker. We had an engineering approach to watchmaking, which goes all the way back to our founder, who was an engineer and watchmaker from America, mm -hmm. bringing the American system of watchmaking to Switzerland in the very first centralized production. So performance and robust materials when you're making performance watches and functional watches mm -hmm. is absolute key. So in 1980, we launched the first full titanium chronograph in the Porsche design line. And in 1986, we launched our first ceramic watches in the Da Vinci and invented the first colored ceramic watches, which we had in white, in burgundy, in blue, in all sorts of colors, which really gave us the starting point to 40 plus years of developing ceramic cases, construction, and today even ceramic movement parts, which make obviously these watches much more scratch resistant, much more high performance than any other traditional material. Now, I know you could talk lots about this, I but, <laughs> but <laughs> I, I, there's so much to cover. Uh, yeah. I, speaking of history, 
there's also the chronography expertise of the company. Yeah. How did chronography watches come to be such a big part of the IWC family? Yeah, you're 100% right. I think once again, when you make watches for the environment of navigation and aviation, then a chronograph is a logical tool, which comes from the basis of being able to navigate in the airspace. But today is really the embodiment of a sports watch. So chronograph is the main category what our clients are looking for in sports watches. And today, IWC has actually developed three completely individual IWC manufactured chronograph movements, all the way up to a monopusher chronograph, which we introduced in the big pilot last year. So chronographs, all made in our new manufacturing center in Schaffhausen, are an integral part of our sports watch portfolio, including the new Top Gun watches in colored ceramics we're launching here at Watches & Wonders this year. Something, speaking of this year, something more yep. relevant, uh, explain to us the Pantone collaboration and the unique color creations there. Yeah, so see, our first approach to colored ceramics was our Mojave Desert timepieces in 2019, which were inspired by the desert landscapes of the training grounds of US Naval Aviation, but also the flight equipment we see in some of those pilots. And to match all the different materials from colored ceramics to straps to superluminova to dials, all perfectly in the same color, was actually in the beginning a real challenge because those materials are not working to the same color standard. So we've now teamed up with Global Color Authority Pantone to certify and engineer a system whereby we can control those colors precisely. And what we're launching here this year, the Woodland Chronograph, for example, is a perfect monochromatic execution in olive green, mm -hmm. where textile, rubber strap, ceramic case, dial, superluminova, and everything is matched to the same standard, giving you that subtle monochromatic look that really becomes like a, a very distinct look on the wrist. And I see that this also matches your outfit today. Well, yeah, we try. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, finally, this is a big topic, so yeah. love to hear your thoughts. Where does IDFC stand when it comes to this whole theme of metaverse and NFTs. Yeah. So look, we, we've always been very much in touch with consumer trends and the way we communicate and interact with our customers. And you've seen that changing radically. I was thinking back fondly the other day that maybe 15 years ago, we were making 10 minute long videos, burning them on DVDs and sending them in the post. And I think when you see where we yeah. are today, it's changed quite a bit. And of course, after being digitally flat across Zoom and Teams and yeah. webcasts, the next stage now is to be digitally in 3D and VR. And the metaverse and Web3, of course, are a major stepping stone, still in its infancy, but a major stepping stone to have a different personal and virtual experience. And the fact that we're here in a hybrid format where we haven't forgotten what we've done over the last two years, and we're actually physically here but connecting to everybody online, we do this on social media, streaming with our mini studios here, actually in flat 2D streaming but also for the first time in the metaverse. So we've teamed up with architect Hani Rashid from New York. He's a specialist in metaverse architecture, as it were, and we're replicating watches and wonders within the spatial environment where you can go either wearing your VR goggles mm -hmm. or even on your desktop and explore the IWC exhibition, all the new watches, even meet our brand ambassadors completely in VR. So you can do it in VR or in AR, which is actual reality here in Geneva. I mean, by the sounds of it, I think that things really could be changing over the next year and maybe we could even be meeting in the metaverse the next time we speak. You're, you're very invited. All you have to do is <laughs> claim your NFT token, uh, open an IWC wallet, and there you go. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Granger, Brilliant. and thank you. we'll see you soon, okay? Have a good Take time. care. Thank you. <laughs>uh, so, as you said, Tag Heuer has a very uh, large history, 160 years. We celebrated it actually uh, last year, and we're very proud of that. We have a lot of uh, passionate collectors, mm -hmm. fans, uh, who um, uh, value a lot uh, all, all that we've done. Founded by uh, Edward Heuer, in the beginning, uh, we were focused a lot on uh, stopwatches, mechanical stopwatches, and we were, at a, some point, the leaders in uh, mechanical stopwatches, and uh, in, the, in the 50s, when uh, this product starting to be less relevant, the company pivoted mm -hmm. and uh, went to timepieces and wristwatches, um, which uh, today is uh, where we stand, what we stand mm -hmm. for, the majority of uh, who we are. Uh, and some of the names we have are the most iconic of the history of watchmaking. Carrera, the Monaco, they come from this age, also the Otavia 
that's been existing since 100 years. We, of course, have a large history of innovation since uh, the 19th century, the invention of the oscillating pin, uh, the first um, waterproof automatic chronograph in, uh, in 69. And um, lately, since five years, uh, we went in a new adventure, investing in connected watches, uh, which is now becoming an increasing part of who we are and who we stand for today. I know it's hard to condense 120 years of history into just uh, two minutes, but describe to us the spirit and vision of Tag Heuer. What comes to mind for you? So it is um, watches, it is craftsmanship, savoir-faire, but more than that, it's a spirit and it's a brand. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, our purpose is uh, to fuel the drive of people to change the limits. Uh, we have uh, very strong images that come to mind when you think of Tag Heuer very strong values, the notion of Swiss avant-garde. Mm -hmm. It's also in our name, you know, tag means technique d'avant-garde. And it's very true in uh, um, the inspiration we take for the innovation, but also uh, for uh, the creativity we have for the brand. It's also sports, sports performance. We've been uh, linked with the world of racing since the 50s, invented uh, sponsoring actually, and it's still a very important part of who we are today. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not only, uh, uh, physical performance, it's also mental performance, uh, which plays a, an important part, uh, and it's a high performance. So these, I would say, are the values, what we stand for, and it's a brand that's very dynamic, constantly on the move. I mean, we release a lot of uh, novelties, uh, um, more probably than uh, uh, the rest of the industry, uh, and uh, we are coming very strongly this year at Watchers and Wonders. And probably a good trade to have to be constantly on the move because as we've seen, the watch industry has had to adapt and adjust throughout the pandemic. So what's your forecast for this year then? We, have, we are very optimistic for 2022. Uh, the brand bounced back very well uh, in 2021. Uh, and uh, we had levels that were higher than uh, what we're doing in 2019. The demand is very high for fine watchmaking in general, but uh, also for especially for our brand. Uh, in the United States, also in Europe with local clientele uh, and uh, in most countries of Asia. We can see this trend continuing uh, and now that uh, COVID restrictions are almost uh, um, finished uh, almost everywhere in the world, we are looking forward to people uh, mm -hmm. traveling again. So in the spirit of optimism, last question in a nutshell, what's in the pipeline for Tag Heuer? You can, don't have to give any secrets away. <laughs> so we have a few novelties we announced uh, this morning mm -hmm. uh, and uh, milestones for the brand. I can even say some brand defining moments. Mm -hmm. uh, last year, we redesigned our Aqua Racer line with uh, two uh, sub collections, one on the diving segment, one on the outdoor. And now we are complementing these watches with uh, technical prowess. So we have a super diver watch in the diving segment, 1000 meter, uh, helium valve, crown protector, and with a new movement, that's a manufacturer movement that allows us to go to a five years warranty. Um, and on the outdoor segments, we are releasing uh, something new and groundbreaking. It's a solar graph uh, technology. It's a solar powered quartz movement. You know, we believe a lot in quartz. We think that uh, it has a proposition that uh, many customers love and favor also over mechanical, and it plays an important part in, uh, in who we are. So if I can say the overarching messages for us, it's uh, durability, it's quality, uh, and it's also innovation. So um, we are releasing at our keynote this afternoon a very special piece, uh, something uh, that is defining for us, uh, that it's on a topic uh, people uh, have been talking about and no brand has yet mm -hmm. really taken the first step. And we have a strong vision there. I can give you uh, small insights without sharing too much because oh, it's going to be released. You can hear that in the keynote, right? But you can expect uh, <laughs> something strong, uh, including uh, lab-grown diamonds mm -hmm. with a vision. Uh, with a never seen before watch, never seen before technology. Well, sounds like there's a lot on the plate and yeah. we'll make sure to tune into that very soon. Thank you so much for joining us, Mr. Thank you Arnold. very much. Take care. <laughs>
And we're back with Inside Watches and Wonders. I'm Tanja König and right now I'm standing in the area called Espas Nouvel Marc. This is the area where we have all the brands that are participating since recently in Watches and Wonders or even for the very first time. At the entrance you can see Patek Philippe with a beautiful booth made out of glass and opposite Patek Philippe you see Rolex with a booth in their signature colors. Moving more forward into the area, uh, we also have Chopard, Hublot and uh, Chanel in the very back. Of course, there's also a big area where you can also just relax and uh, chill in between. Also represented in uh, Espace Nouvelle Marc are the brands um, Tag Heuer, Hublot, Zenit, Oris and Grand Seiko. But more importantly, what I want to show you, of course, or equally importantly, I would say, uh, are the many bars in between the booths. You can see them right there behind in front of the uh, Hublot area for instance, where you can get your morning coffee or depending on the time of the day, a glass of champagne. Well, for me, it's time to get a cup of coffee right now. To all the new brands uh, in Watches and Wonders, welcome to the family. I'll be back tomorrow to show you another part of the fair. And with this, I'll hand it over back to you, Olivia. Thank you so much, Tanya. Now, stay with us. A very exciting segment is coming up where we get up close and personal with the watches themselves. It's a moment that I think many of us have been waiting for. It's time to really uh, examine the timepieces and I'm delighted to welcome our lineup of experts who will be walking through all the pieces in detail for us. Uh, first up, we have Gianfranco Ritchel. He's an insider of the Swiss watchmaking space, also works as an independent consultant. Next up, we have Carson Chan joining us from Hong Kong and he's the chief advisor to the Fondation and as well as Joanna Langer. She's coming from Munich and she's a watch trainer and her job is basically to help us uh, make the watchmaking process understandable to everyone as well as people like me. So I don't want to waste any time. Let's jump right into it. Gianfranco, you have the honors of presenting the Armstrong model as well as Cartier. Let's start with Armstrong. Yes, I'm so proud to present the first watch on this Watch as a Wonder 2022, the Armstrong Orbit. Like the name already reveals, it's something related to an orbital function, which means uh, in, normally at date it's shown mostly on the dial through a little window. And in this watch here, thanks to the pusher at 10, we can press it and it shows you during a few seconds the right date on the bezel thanks to these big hands on the mechanical movement. Let me try to press it so you can see it. Here we are. There we go. Yeah, it's truly innovative. Huh? And also these three signature bridges from Armstrong that we can really see into the workings of the movement. Um, they each are holding a, an important part, like the micro rotor at the one o'clock position, or even this um, equal force spiral at the six o'clock position. So really getting an insight into the inner workings and this real transparency of the architecture. And it's really visible on the wrist. You even don't have to turn the watch to admire all that. That makes it so special and unique, as it's really never made before in the watch industry. I especially love the integrated bracelet. Now the watch has the integrated bracelet and also the bezel. Uh, you notice the color contrast is very, it's, it's very different because it's made out of ceramic. Oh, that's really modern. That's really a sport chic watch for every gentleman. Now let's take a look at the Cartier because I know that this one is fairly special. Yes. In fact, for once, not a round watch like we mostly see it, but a shaped watch like we call it. It's, it's a rectangular watch which has a long tradition, typically Art Deco design and the Cartier tank chinoise, so recognizable thanks to this two horizontal element on the case, a beautiful polished and brushed case. It's really, really a, a signature for Cartier. 
Yeah, we all know about the secret signature, right, from Cartier. Ah, you mean on the dial? <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course, I had to sell, tell it. How we have the Roman numerals, which are typical Cartier, the blue sword hands, this railroad um, graduation, and this signature. What are you Right mean? there, that little, little detail at the seven indices, just that insider information with the Cartier written very small, but of course it's there for all in the know. And it's amazing to think that um, the original tank chinoise came out one century ago this year. So very fitting that, of course, Cartier come back with this right. tank chinoise as relevant to us. I mean, how many brands can talk about having a hundred year design, right? So this definitely is something very, very iconic from Cartier. I think iconic design and shape has always been Cartier's main focus when they launch a product. Something very iconic, very recognizable. And it's in yellow gold, if I'm not mistaken. Correct. So like, long time ago, yellow gold has probably to come back today. Well, let's move on to the next two models. Joanna, you have the honours. Let's start with the Chopard. And I know that Carson is going to add his thoughts later because he describes himself as a mechanical geek. It's yeah. <laughs> a pleasure, yes. Yeah. So we, here we have the Chopard Alpine Eagle Flying Tourbillon. So this is inspired from a Chopard historical model, the St. Moritz from 1980. And you see here that it's in the very lucent steel. So this is instead of the 316 L steel that we usually find within steel watches. It's 50% harder actually than um, the normal alloy of steel. And look at that reflection, look at the luminosity of the steel. It really has this vibrant um, shine to it, really unique. And of course, the highlighting of the flying tourbillon at the six o'clock position. So beautiful flying tourbillon. You cannot, you don't have the upper bridge. It's just affixed at the base of the movement so we can see the full beauty of the tourbillon and actually right through the movement, right, Carson? Yes, I, I actually have been paying attention to the Alpine Eagle collection when it came out uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, this watch is really, really uh, built very nicely. The watch has also integrated bracelet. Did you notice? Ah, uh, yes, yes. And what, you know what I love the most? It's the dial itself. Because if you have a closer look, you see how the, the brush dial starts from the center of the tourbillon and the kind of illuminating with this kind of alleged blue color. I love the name, the Alec Glacier, which is the longest in Europe. It, it's really inspi good inspiration for the name of Alpine Eagle, Lucent. That's a beautiful story on your wrist. Let's not forget, huh? it's all with the Ponson de Genève. So very oh. the highest, strictest of standards, both with craftsmanship, reliability and accuracy of staying the timepiece. Staying with you, the next one we have is IWC Schaffhausen. And as I understand, the focus here really is the material. Yes, indeed. Um, here we have, so it's the IWC Woodland in, in green this year. Of course, very typical for IWC within the top gun series of pilot's watches. So, of course, it's a chronograph, a double pusher chronograph. We have the 30 minute and hour counters on the dial. But yeah, Olivia, as you said, the ceramic um, green and the dark green dial, but not only that, it's the ceritanium. And Gianfranco, I know you love to discuss about <laughs> yeah, yeah. ceritanium. Since I discovered this material, I, I love it because it's typically combining the properties or the advantages of two different materials in one. It means the lightness mm -hmm. and flexibility and hardness of titanium core inside. And over it, there is a kind of, it's not a coating, it's, it's in the material. It's, it's a ceramic layer over it, which protects it against scratches and whatever. So we have the both advantages in this ceratarium, which is a, uh, it's an exclusivity of IWC. So the ceratanium is on the case back, right? Absolutely, and the pushers. And the pushers, ah, oh, yeah. interesting. Yeah. And by the way, you mentioned the color. Even the, the indexes looks like green, but in reality, once they are loaded with energy, they glow up really strongly. So it's really the Top Gun spirit, looking like a cockpit in a plane. It's beautiful. We've seen many green came out, but this is a very, very unique. I love the, the somber green on this watch, paired with a rubber strap with fabric inlay. This is a very, very nice contrast to the watch. 
I feel you. I see you feel like a pilot wearing it on the bridge. Just holding it, I feel like a pilot, yes. Uh, Carson, you've been doing a great job being our watch model so far, and now it's time to turn the attention to you. We have the Laurent Ferrier model, and I know that you like to wear this a certain way. Yes, yes, <laughs> Olivia, look, look at this watch. Uh, very interesting piece. It's very shiny. Gianfranco, what do you think the material is? Can you guess? Oh, it looks like white, so it could be stainless steel, white gold, or platinum for such an elegant watch. It's actually titanium, grade 5 titanium. So the watch is extremely light. Now, when you get a Long Ferrier watch, attention to detail is everything. First, we start with the dial. The dial is in a blue gradient color. Uh, it's, it, it starts from a very light color and going into a very deep color. And Look at the hands. I think Joanna is a. I love she's those hands. Fan I of absolutely these hands. adore these hands. They're the Asegai hands. And look at the shape. Um, also, this teams up very nicely with the white gold indices. Right. Um, it's a beautiful combination. So elegant. And as you say, it's these attention to detail. Yeah. And maybe you can turn the timepiece. I was going to save that for myself because now the watch with the manual winding movement, lots of hand finishing, a lot of detail into the movement. I love this movement because it has a lot of uh, hand finishing uh, uh, refinement to it. And I think if I were to wear the watch, I would wear it upside down. Uh, that's typically you. <laughs> but you're right. We have to appreciate the watch from the outside, like a person, the aesthetic from outside. But there's still an internal beauty to admire. Now, the final watch that we have is from Tag Heuer, and it's not your typical sports watch. Carson, what's your take? This is the Tag Heuer Aqua Racer Solar Graph. Oh, so just by the name, what do you think, what, do you, what does the name suggest? Quite an easy question. Huh? Something to do with the sun, <laughs> right? We're, we're using the energy from the sun, I would expect. Absolutely. And in fact, this is the first time ever Tag Heuer making a solar power watch. Now, on the surface of it, if you don't pay close attention to it, you would not have noticed. In fact, the dial is transparent. That it allows sunlight to enter and absorb into the movement, allowing it to run, to, to power. No plug-in and waiting hours on these kind of things? No. All you need is the sun. Oh. Actually, it's actually only two minutes of sunlight, right, that we need to power it for one complete day. Absolutely correct, Joanna. That's right. All you need to do is have the watch under sunlight for two minutes and it will run for a whole day. Now, if you stop the watch, let's say if you haven't worn it for a long time, all you need is just 10 seconds to restart it. Fantastic technology. Uh, combine it with elegance of a sporty, typical watch with a carbon bezel and a stainless steel ADLC coating on it, which DLC, makes it yes. so black and full of character and, of course, strong luminous indication on it, right? Yeah, and it's a professional diver's watch, huh? so we can go to a depth of 200 meters. Yes, one last feature. This? Yeah. If you need to travel, if you don't want to wear a watch for a long time, it has a power save mode. Now, you don't need to download an app or you need to plug it in or anything. All you need to do is unwind the, screw, uh, the crown, pull out the crown to activate the power save mode and it will retain the energy up to three and a half years. Fantastic. Amazing. That's yeah. my watch. <laughs> After the shoot, I will go to dive with it to test it if it really holds 200 meters. Now, I know there's lots to discuss there, but we're watch uh, summer, so we have to stick with the schedule. Thank you very much. We're going to be seeing you all three every single day to get a take on the watches for the rest of the week. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, throughout the week, we are going to be hosting a panel discussion from the Fondation every day at 1 p.m. And each one is going to touch on a different angle of the watchmaking process and business. To get a taste of the topics, I'm now joined by Pascal Ralsoud, Director of External Affairs um, at the Fondation and uh, watchmaking expert himself as well. Pascal, here we are, Watchers and Wonders 2022, and it's an exciting time. The panel talks are going to be starting tomorrow. Tell us uh, what it's all going to be about. Yes, good morning, <laughs> Olivia. I'm so happy to be finally back. 
so this year we've decided to have a leading theme throughout the panels, mm -hmm. sustainability. And although um, the quality mechanical watch is sustainable by essence, there's still a lot to be done in order for our sector to contribute to the limitation of the global warming of 1.5 degrees by 2030, which is tomorrow. Uh, so for me, um, the um, sustainability aspect is a very complex subject and very dear to me because it also literally touches all of our operations. And so every day at 1 p.m. we'll discuss live about one aspect of this most pressing topic. First one will be transparency. Uh, it's a little word, but encompassing so many <laughs> dimensions. Uh, sustainable in innovations uh, about, of course, the, 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 the ability to innovate uh, responsibly. Sustainable sourcing is all about the power and the impact of the supply chain. Digitalization, what has the increased digi digitalization of our industry uh, as an impact of our, of our footprint. We'll also discuss about uh, the new customer's expectation in terms of ESG. Mm -hmm. And finally, we'll have a look at a global um, approach for a true circular economy uh, that we can do inside mm -hmm. the industry. So all these panels will provide a benchmark of our industry towards other luxury sectors. They will also uh, be able to show the current initiatives and what is coming next, mm -hmm. of course. And hopefully this discussion will uh, initiate collaboration as they did last year so that the industry can move forward together. It's a big topic, but a relevant one at that. And then I have to ask you, who is actually going to be present to deliver these insights for these topics? Yeah, we have a lot of Interesting people, more than 25 panelists, wow. uh, almost 10 CEOs, uh, many uh, industry leaders from our uh, exhibiting, Watches mm -hmm. and Wonders exhibiting brands. We'll have also major players in sustainability, like the Responsible Jewelry Council. We'll have pioneers of digitalization, such as Ariani and Aura. We'll have Deloitte providing us with key data on uh, sustainability for uh, through their uh, watch study. We'll have also innovators like Panater and Ecal, who will see what's next, and also a view from retailers, experts, scholars, mm -hmm. but also collectors. Wonderful. Sounds like there's a lot to look forward to. Remember, that's going to be at 1 p.m. starting tomorrow, every single day. Now, there you have it. That's your morning news wrap-up of day one of Watchers and Wonders. There's still plenty more to come later today, so remember to catch all the action across our platforms. Big keynotes to look forward to from Rolex, IWC, Schaffhausen, Tag Heuer and Auris. And of course, don't miss our late show. That's going to be starting at 7 p.m. You'll be joined by our host, Ariane Alcorta, and she's going to be bringing you all the highlights from the day. I'll be back here tomorrow morning, same place, uh, to share a preview of what's to come. I'm Olivia Chang. Take care. See you tomorrow.